good morning so uh, i am shichita goyal and i will be teaching the course topological combinatorics this semester so as we all know we are going to have online teaching for entire semester this week so I have decided to record these lectures and then upload them for you just in case there are glitches you will have to let me know and then maybe if it is not fixable we'll change the mode of instruction but for now so let me first give some basic uh, technical details related to this course okay so we are going to have two lectures each week okay one on tuesday and another one on thursday if there is any change for any week particularly then you would know and each lecture would be of one and a half hours and they will be uploaded to youtube okay i shall share the link where this will be available so you should be able to access each lecture for that week on the day of the lecture by 2 pm yeah and if there is any problem in the sense of like uh, size of the video etc then possibly we'll have to make it one hour each and three hours a week but main plan is to do three hours a week so either it's going to be one and a half hours and two lectures or one hour and three lectures okay coming to the books that i would be following first one is the Mato sex using Bohr's Lam theorem. And the second book is going to be the combinatorial algebraic topology. So we will start the course with the Mathesex book and then for the last two topics which are the discrete mass theory and the Hom complexes of graphs, graph complexes basically, we will uh, refer to the second book. Okay, so this is with the books and then next thing, okay, assessment, how am I going to uh, grade? So for grading, I have planned to give there will be assignments okay this is going to hold 40 percentage of marks and then for the final exam there is going to be a presentation which is going to hold a 60 percent of weightage so what do i really mean so assignments basically will be uh, uh, what you can think of as like your quizzes or mid sort of examinations maybe after the end of each chapter or so uh, this is roughly first five chapters and these are going to be two chapters from the books which two i will have to see the number and let you know okay but okay so the assignments are mainly going to be uh, like possibly after each chapter or two chapters we will see that and for the presentation I really mean that you choose a topic now once you know the entire syllabus 
and once our class strength is fixed we will uh, see if some topics can will be given to you and you will present them at the end of the course okay so the entire course will in some sort be divided in two parts most of the topics of course should be covered by me and then few topics i will assign to each of you and you will have to present them at the end okay so this is going to be more like a project like semester long project which you will do and after this or rather even before this we so since i'm pre recording and uh, adding these if there are any questions how are you going to get an address so for this we'll have office hours but you for this you email me okay and we'll fix up a time and we'll meet either over zoom or through google meet or some channel or if if it is a discussion sort of a thing we can have it on moodle itself okay so this is to be fixed over email and platforms could be any of the moodle or maybe google meet or whatever we will see that and okay so uh, as i already told these are going to be available on the youtube if there are any direct i mean i would really encourage you to if there are any questions you please email them to me okay don't leave them like a comment on the in the chat box or something so this is this we are then let's start with the course okay so i am going to start with the first book first okay and i am assuming that all of you have some basic idea with the simplicities simplicial complexes etc but i since this is the first lecture and i want to keep it light i will just have a quick overview of these uh, things okay but as i told you already mainly i would be following the using bors using borsukulan's theorem book by matasek linearly we would go so let's see so uh so i start with the simplicial complex so let's start with the topic of geometric simplicial complexes okay so what are they first of all geometric simplicial complexes that by name itself suggests that they are in some sense geometric in nature okay so you should be able to see them visualize them so what is it it first of all you choose a finely independent points on a in a space okay so what does a finely independent roughly means so if let's say i choose one point then this is anyway independent it's always independent but if i choose two points a finely independent just means that these two points should be distinct so the second point should not happen to be the same point so i take another point so if i had taken just this this is a zero simplex if i take a finely two independent points and take their convex hull which means this line segment this what i have got now is a one dimensional simplicial com simplex had i taken just this it was a zero simplex and if let's say i already have two or finely independent points i take a third one which means the third one should not lie in the convex hull of these two points which means it has to be somewhere off the line and you take the convex hull of these 
this is a two simplex okay like this you see what these simplices are what is a geometric simplicial complex now geometric simplicial complex is nothing but the collection of simplices such that any face of the simplex also should be an element of that set okay so roughly speaking what i'm saying is that if you have taken so first of all all the main elements that count here in a geometric simplicial complex are the maximal dimensional simplices okay and as soon as i say simplices i mean one has to take all of its faces also so the major condition that comes here is that if you take sigma and tau let's say some name k sigma and tau are two simplices of k okay such that sigma intersection tau is non empty then sigma intersection tau should also be a simplex yeah and the other thing which i was saying by the all its faces also should be there is that if sigma is a simplex and some maybe gamma which is contained in sigma and gamma is also a simplex then this should imply that gamma should be present in this set in this collection yeah so geometric simplicial complex is nothing but the collection of all simplices and its faces we will soon see why we are distinguishing and calling it geometric simplicial complex because there is something called abstract simplicial complex we will come to it in a minute once you have geometric simplicial complex there is another uh, important concept which is of relative integer so if at all i have to uh, formalize the concept of affine independence it means that you take v0 v1 up to pk to be some k plus 1 points in rd then they are a finely independent if there exist alpha 0 alpha 1 up to alpha k real numbers such that the summation of alpha i vi i from 0 to k is 0 and summation of alpha i is 0 but not all alpha is are zero it is clearly if you choose all alpha is to be zero then this happens to be true this happens to be true so you are not really getting anything okay so you say that there is at least one choice of k plus 1 elements from k such that this linear combination is zero the summands of the coefficients is zero but not all the coefficients were zero in such a case you call these points are finely independent okay and so there are equivalent uh, the uh, notions of figuring out when a collection of points is a finely independent which is the lemma 1.3.2 you can look it up it's not that important for us as of now So I'll skip it. Okay. 
okay now we will see what a relative interior is so relative interior is so uh, let's uh, start visualizing it so let's say i was working in this okay i was let's say working in this two simplex and i choose a point on this yeah oops this is not right so if this is a point let's say x okay then if you take the convex hull of these points so what is the relative interior of a simplex so we have already seen simplex doesn't mean just one simplex okay all of its faces are also simplices so when you look at a simplex geometrically okay this is a solid ball in a particular dimension right okay so before that let's just uh, see dimension of a simplex also so if a simplex has been generated by let's say k plus 1 many a finely independent points simplex sigma looks like convex hull of k plus 1 a finely independent points then dimension of sigma is k okay so it is as it is sitting in rk yeah rk is the smallest dimensional euclidean space in which you can embed sigma so when i talk about the relative interior of a simplex what i do is if dimension of sigma is k i remove all tau that are faces of sigma hmm? and dimension of tau is strictly less than k so what it really means is if i had this filled triangle as my sigma okay how many faces does it have this is so sigma as it is is of dimension 2 right so you have a tau 1 you have a tau 2 you have a tau 3 and even these are there so you remove all faces of dimension which are lesser than the dimension of sigma and what you get is the relative interior of a simplex okay these concepts later will be useful but uh, we are just linearly going through the things so it's good to have them in mind okay next point in the same uh, connection is the support of a point so if let's say you are dealing with a point in a simplex okay so if you look at any particular simplex and you take any point belonging to that simplex then there is exactly one face of it whose interior relative interior is going to contain that point for example if you had this two dimensional simplex and the point was here let's say okay so if this is the point 
is this point going to lie on the relative interior of this full 2 simplex no because in that relative interior this portion is not there but this certainly lies in the relative interior of this simplex okay so in such a case what am i going to say if let's say this was my tau 2 if i stick to the original notation then support of x is the simplex so um this is tau 2 okay similarly if the point was let's say here y this was my sigma then this y belongs exactly to the relative interior of sigma and no other simplex so in such a case i'm going to say that support of y is sigma okay now uh, there's a quick exercise which you should try is that the set of all faces of a simplex itself is a simplicial complex okay so if sigma is a simplex then the collection of all the faces of sigma forms a simplicial complex so please verify this for yourself and forming a simplicial complex you basically just check that whenever you have two intersecting simplices their intersection should also be a simplex in the set and if you have a face of it then that should also be in the simplex collection and with that let me now switch directly to abstract simplicial complexes okay abstract simplicial complexes are yeah so abstract simplicial complexes gives the way to see these objects in a combinatorial way okay what it really does is that so far uh, we have been seeing these complexes through euclidean spaces or in some sense we were seeing them in euclidean spaces now what we do is that we associate the vertices which are the zero dimensional simplices with some points in a set so if you start with a set let's say some s okay if you start with a set s let's say it has finite cardinality and now you by default assume that all the points in s are affinely independent it doesn't make sense as it is to talk about them because we don't know where the points of s are lying but treat them in your head as if they are some points and they are affinely independent and in rd some large enough rd okay so an abstract simplicial complex can be formed on the collection of subsets of this particular set such that if let's say some so this is collection of not all okay i am not saying all the subsets of s some collection of subsets of s such that again first of all as you have seen already if you want 
some simplex to be there so just compare it with the geometric simplicial complex if a simplex was there all of its faces should also be forming simplices which means if some subset of s is there let's say some a abstract simplicial complex maybe let's say a so if some a is in script a and b happens to be a subset of a then b should also be in this collection this ensures that all the faces of a are in a okay so as soon as this condition is satisfied we would know that this gives a abs gives an abstract simplicial complex okay and as before the dimension of this abstract simplicial uh, or rather uh, dimension of a simplex abstract simplex is going to be one less than the cardinality of that set so if so elements of or rather elements of a are simplices or rather abstract simplices okay and dimension of a is cardinality of a minus 1 okay so you can look up the examples this is not a big deal and uh, once you have the abstract simplicial complex and the geometric simplicial complex pictures ready in your head you should see that how I see these things does not really make a difference okay why because abstract simplicial complexes can always be visualized as geometric simplicial complexes you can take the geometric realization of a of an abstract simplicial complex and what you get is a topological space Okay. So once you have abstract simplicial complexes, we have maps between them. Just like any collection, when you have topological spaces, you have maps between them. When you have groups, you have maps between them. So when you have abstract simplicial complexes, you have maps between them and these maps are called simplicial maps. So simplicial maps go from one simplicial complex, abstract simplicial complex to another abstract simplicial complex and the only condition it has to satisfy is that a simplex goes to a simplex. Okay. So if you take a so this actually happens on the vertex set of these abstract simplicial complexes. So in this case, when we started the definition, this S was the vertex set. And then we started considering all the possible sub uh, or like the subsets of S which happen to come as A or B etc. Okay, So you define a mapping on the vertex set of K and L such that if A is in K, if A is an abstract simplex then F of A which is nothing but the union of F of A a in A. This particular, this is again a subset of L, right? Vertex set of L. So this should be an element of L. So this should belong to L. And if this happens, then we say that the mapping F is a simplicial mapping between two simplicial complexes. 
it's easy to see that if this uh, if this map happens to be bijective then it gives you a uh, bijective whose inverse mapping is also simplicial then you actually get isomorphism of these abstract simplicial complexes and what is really happening in the back end is just the renaming of the vertex sets so we treat them as technically the same abstract simplicial complexes okay and you can see that if at all you have um so uh so i hope the the connection is clear between geometric simplicial complexes and the abstract simplicial complexes geometric simplicial complex and abstract simplicial complex if you have a geometric simplicial complex okay you look at the points whose uh look at the affinely independent points whose convex hull was being considered and look at all those points they form the vertex set here and then whenever uh, the a convex hull is being considered you put those particular points as a set here and this way you get an abstract simplicial complex from a geometric simplicial complex from an abstract simplicial complex you come back to geometric simplicial complex using the geometric realization okay so we'll be using these two notions interchangeably without even mention in most of the times because one gives the another but what is more important is the concept of an affine extension which tells you that if you have a mapping of simplicial abstract simplicial complexes then you get a mapping on the geometric realization of its associated geometric simplicial complex and how do you do that so first of all let's say we start with a simplicial mapping so some f for it can just switch page yeah so we start with two abstract simplicial complexes k and l Okay. We take a simplicial mapping from K to L. Yeah. So I've already told you how to see a. Let me rephrase this. So not this, but let's say some. Oh goodness! Some K and L are my geometric abstract geometric simplicial complexes. Okay, and delta K and delta L are the associated abstract simplicial complexes. Geometric 
but Delta always associates the mind with. So if let's say Delta K and Delta L are two geometric simplicial complexes, okay, and K L and are the associated abstract simplicial complexes, and you have then a mapping F from vertex set of K to vertex set of L, a simplicial mapping. Okay, we are going to see what does it mean to extend this particular simplicial mapping to these spaces on the topology level. Okay, so once you have geometric simplicial complexes, you also have uh, geometric realizations. So the simplicial mapping that you start with this is defi defined just on the vertex sets right now when I have to define the extension of it so let me denote it by norm f then this goes from the geometric realization of delta k to geometric realization of delta l and how do I define it we define it using the relative integers of the synthesis. So if let's say for a point if you take a point let's say um, so if some x belongs to delta k okay as a simplicial complex it's a topological space right and now in the geometric reali realization if you take any point x in this space how am I going to define f on this particular point that is the question so remember we talked about the support of any point so if let's say x support of x is the simplex sigma in k Remember, there is a unique sigma which is going to be support of x for any x, right? And if so, sigma any simplex is convex hull of a number of points, right? So, sigma itself comes as a linear combination of these points which is the convex hull which means x in particular can be written as these alpha is di is i from 0 to k if sigma was a convex hull of v0 to vk okay and of course it's a convex hull so each alpha i is positive and their sum and is 1 ok so this is the information you get from the fact that each point has a unique support each point has a support which is a unique simplex and each simplex is a convex hull of a finitely finitely many are finitely independent points in such a way so now the norm f of x i am going to define this as just the obvious way okay so remember f is actually happening on the vertex set and these are the vertices so they happen to be here also so f is defined on these vertices I have taken those vertices I translated them took the convex hull just how I would have uh, just how it was present in my delta k and I land in n this is how I extend this map ok you should check that this is a well defined map because this collection of fbi's is always a vertex set of a simplex okay and you can also check that 
this is a continuous map furthermore if is if this simplicial mapping as a map on the vertex side happens to be injected then even this map is injected and if this is an isomorphism then this gives you homeomorphism so the spaces technically also becomes the same which we had been talking about okay so now let me come to the next topic which is the simplicial complexes and posets okay so the last topic that i want to cover in today's lecture is the relation between simplicial complexes and posets how one gives the another okay so we have already seen how an abstract simplicial complex gives a geometric simplicial complex and how a geometric simplicial complex gives rise to an abstract simplicial complex so from now on i am not going to mention the kind of simplicial complex i am dealing with because other can be achieved from the first so we are just going to deal with the simplicial complexes and now we will see how abstract simplicial complexes and posets are related uh, simplicial complexes and posets are related okay so first of all just how we know that in just how we know that in simplicial complexes also there is some sort of an ordering that is coming some partial ordering that is coming because of the uh containment okay so uh it's easier to see it through the abstract simplicial complexes you know that if a particular subset of the vertex set is there then all the subsets of that particular set are also there okay so the set with the highest number of elements is forming a bigger and bigger simplex right so you can define a partial order on the collection of simplices of an abstract simplicial complex right so and this is precisely what we are going to do if you have a simplicial complex you can define a uh, oh, let me start from one direction and then we see the other side so if let's say you have a simplicial complex or let's start from the poset first if i have a poset which means a partially ordered set which means uh there is a partial order on the elements of this particular set okay so you look at the ordered chains in this maximal linearly ordered chains in this set if you see okay they are going to starting from the lowest element some element some element some element some element some element etc something like this right so of course uh, the way i am drawing it i am keeping in my mind that this is uh, this is an element which is smaller than this this is smaller than this and so on so if let's say this is the maximal in this chain which means there is nothing which is bigger than this then this forms a maximal simplex correspondingly and um, yeah so you get the idea right you take these maximally maximal linearly order chains in the poset p and this you declare as a simplex okay so this is a simplex and then you consider all of its subsets and just like that once you have taken all the maximal chains of all the maximally linearly uh, ordered chains 
and the highest element you declare to be your synthesis and take all its subsets to form the complete simplex the collection of all these is a complex it's a simplicial complex and such a complex is called order complex of the pose at p okay so and form a simplex and then take all of its subsets okay so you do this for each maximal linearly ordered chain in p hmm? and once you have done this this gives a simplicial complex and this simplicial complex is called the order complex of p p was the poset that you started with p was the poset that you started with and having done this you get a simplicial complex and this simplicial complex is called the order complex of p okay so uh, why i am giving time to these topics because these are like sort of basic building blocks for this course once these concepts are there in the mind other things will be much easier now given a simplicial complex how can i construct a poset out of it it should be more or less straightforward if you have a simplicial complex okay you pick up any simplex from it let's say some sigma and then all of its one lesser dimension faces come here okay let's say now you are standing at this particular simplex then all of its one lesser dimensional faces you list them out and so on and so forth you complete this diagram and what you are left with is a poset associated to k okay and such a poset is called a face poset and we denote it by <coughs> face poset of k you just keep on taking the set of non empty synthesis of the complex k and order them by inclusion okay now there is an interesting uh, point here that when you look at the hasse diagram of a poset what it really does is that it just keeps on listing the elements where any element is connected to just its immediate predecessor and immediate successor okay so if you label these elements so uh, maybe i can show the picture itself yeah is this is so if you look at this particular simplex okay we start with this simplex this is 
this has two maximal simplices one is this two simplex one two three and another maximal simplex is three four which is a van der Meer simplex so then a Hasse diagram corresponding to this is starting with let's say the highest dimensional cell which is one two three and then all subsets of one two three so one two one three two three of one dimension less and then for one two one three two three you do the same thing and you come down to one two three and there was this another uh, one cell three four and then for those you do so this is the Hasse diagram this picture which we got is the Hasse diagram corresponding to this particular simplicial complex okay now when you look at so of course this is this is giving rise to a poset right we started with a simplex we constructed a poset out of it and from the poset now again i can construct a complex out of it right how i do that is that you start with these points okay and one and two are forming a cell one two so if i have taken one and two the one two is also a oops. so starting with one starting with two one two is a point so if you are constructing a constructing it this way that all of these elements that that appear in the Hesse diagram becomes the points of a simplicial complex in the way I'm going to explain then we get something really interesting so you have one you have two you have three the basic points and then you take the convex hull on that convex hull the center point you declare as the one two which is the point that you get here like that you keep on doing and then for all of these the sort of intersection point was this so this is that point here and what you have really got is the first barycentric subdivision of this that you started with why i'm calling it first barycentric subdivision because you can have nth barycentric subdivision also so for the geometric simplicial complexes you just take the barycenters and you very centers of each of the faces and you join them to the previously created very centers okay and that is how you get a very centric subdivision in the geometric simplicial complexes for the abstract simplicial complexes this is a way you pass on to this you come to its Hesse diagram and create a complex out of it okay so yeah that is more or less the main thing and this gives you the first barycentric subdivision and of course if you have posets and there are monotone maps on the poset So remember we saw that simplicial mappings are nothing but uh, mappings on the vertex set so that simplices are mapped to simplices. So now we will see if you have monotone maps of posets how they can give simplicial mappings of the corresponding simplicial complexes of course. Let me just recall what a monotone map means. So remember in POSET two elements can be ordered or not ordered. So monotone maps just means that if you have let's say two POSETs, let's say P1 with some order 1 and P2 with some order 2, okay, and then a map F from P1 
order 1 to P2 order 2 then this is a monotone map if whenever two elements are comparable just take x x prime if they are comparable in a way that x is smaller than x prime as per the order 1 then the their images fx and ff f x prime should follow this relation okay so I mean, you may say that this or for a fixed once you have fixed a particular thing then possibly this but this we are going to avoid why because we are always going to look at the the uh, like here at least for this particular reasoning that I want to really see the simplicial mappings coming from the monotone maps I want to see only the subspace inclusions and only this thing respects the subscri subspace inclusions this is the other way around okay so this is the one which is useful for us so this is the kind of monotone maps that I am going to restrict my attention to and whenever this happens what we know is that any such map on four sets gives rise to a simplicial map oops simplicial mapping on their associated order complexes which means you will get a map from the vertex set of delta of P1 to vertex set of delta of P2. Okay, so you're going to get this simplicial mapping starting from a monotone poset map of this kind. Okay, so this is pretty much it that I wanted to cover in the first lecture. Uh, also, I'm not, I mean, it looks like I might have gone fast because there are no questions happening in the middle of the talk so uh, please let me know if the talk went very fast or something or if I can maintain the same pace which is a good point like good part in this case we will be able to finish the course much faster but uh, yeah it should not be like you're not able to understand the material so please let me know and please uh, try doing the exercises from the book as it is and of course whatever other questions you have you should do so yeah I will stop this lecture here and the next lecture will come after two days on Thursday and we'll start with the Borsukulam theorem in its uh, many various variants. How all it keeps appearing in our daily life, we and, and we are not even noticing. And what are the other ways of looking at it? That is going to be the main thing, maybe for next uh, three to four lectures, maybe. Yes, but please do let me know if the lecture went fast or if I can even increase the pace further how it should go and of course any other feedbacks if you would want me to consider please let me know through the emails or through the Moodle okay.